Hello, and welcome to another episode of Intune.Training, the place to learn how to use Microsoft Intune, the Steve and Adam show with Adam and not Steve, the intern. Hey, Ben. The intern is back. Yeah, he is. It's been a, uh, it's been a long time between drinks, but I'm here. Um, I'm not jet lagged at all, uh, and uh, I'm happy to be wasting my Saturday hanging out with, uh, with you, Adam. Awesome. Well, same here. <laughs> I mean, you know, if we're wasting away, we might as well do it together. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. What are we talking about today? Well, uh, first we're going to talk about how, yes, you're going to have to unblur your screen because your video got choppy. <laughs> oh, no. Okay. Yeah, uh, it is what it is. Um, uh, I'm going to do but this. We, we brought in the, the alternate OS expert uh, to talk about an alternate OS option here. Um, so we, Steve and I started working down this path a couple of weeks ago and we were, we were on a roll and we said, all right, let's, let's do this one. And well, we really felt like, like Ben was going to be mad at us if we did it without him. So um, I think in, in full transparency, you guys were talking about doing this video and I was like, no, not, not unless I'm on it because you guys will tease it and you'll make fun of it. Uh, so I stopped them from uh, recording. Um, and, uh, I guess we can explain a little bit about what we're doing specifically now yes so uh we are going to be doing linux uh with intune go figure um but to be Weirder really have happened. clear this is not linux management with intune the purpose of enrolling uh or the, this first round i don't know where they're headed with this but the the at least the initial round here is allowing you to um, set up compliance policies for ubuntu based uh, boxes and there's some specific requirements um, on uh, Microsoft's site that we'll talk about. Um, and so we're going to just go through that. It's, it's so you can set up compliance policy so that you can then use conditional access for Linux based boxes. So it's yeah. a step in, step in a really good direction to allow, um, allow folks to do more secure things within the Microsoft platform using Linux. Exactly. And I think it, it's important to point out, um, you know, I think this is one of the things that myself and Steve definitely always talks about is the first thing that you should always be really concerned about is compliance and, and sort of g general data access rules for your corporate data. Um, so even without device management and all the group policy uh, nonsense that we, that we all uh, know and love, if we can just get this basic uh, conditional access policy rule set up, then most of what you need to do is done as far as compliance in your organization. Everything on top of that is just a nice to have. Um, so I think, you know, this is a really good place to start. Uh, and I'm very curious to see where, uh, you know, what Microsoft do uh, with this sort of, you know, non-standard operating system stuff, uh, you know, and, and management in general uh, in Linux. Because let's face it, Linux is, is, is huge. Uh, and I'm sure that there's going to be a lot more uh, functionality, especially around containerized uh, software. Um, all of that runs on Linux because Linux is small and fast. Yep. So, um, so here we go. Uh, and full disclaimer, um, Ben knows how to use Linux. He loves it. I've, this is the most I've ever even talked about Linux, much less used it. <laughs> uh, I, that's not true. I've done some stuff with Raspberry, Raspberry Pi. Um, but mostly just copying and pasting random commands from the internet because that's what you do, right? That's what you do. Un um, untested, untrusted, just copy yeah. and paste. Uh, pseudo, let's go. All right. <laughs> uh, so, uh, so Ben's going to drive, but first we're going to talk a little bit about, uh, we're going to look, look, take a look at what's available on the docs. And this is what um, the, the kind of the playbook that we're going to work from. And the main thing to keep in mind here is that we aren't, uh, we've not done this yet. At we, all. We, we haven't even done a dry run, so nope. I'm a little bit scared. We have prepped some devices, and those devices are ready to go. And we're hoping that the commands that we're going to run through are going to get us there. So if you look here on the docs, it says, all right, enroll your uh, Linux device in Intune. And um, here are the requirements we talked about. So Ubuntu desktop running 2204 or... Uh, LTS and it could be on a physical or Hyper-V box, but it also needs to be a, a GNOME um, graphical. I don't know what these words mean, but it's a GNOME. You don't. Okay. Desktop. So GNOME is the, uh, it's the UI. Basically the, the cool thing about all uh, Linux environments is you get to choose what uh, your GUI is. GNOME is one of them. There's a bunch of other ones, but essentially this is the, the standard or de facto. So that's why cool. they're just saying uh, essentially the, the first, the first blush at this is they just picked the most common operating system for like standard users. 
um, and the most common desktop environment. Um, it'll it'll expand, I'm sure. Yep. Um, and check this one out, Ben. You need to install Edge on your box. Um, so we probably should try and see if we can do that. We're, we're wondering if if um, how good Steve's or Ben's Ben's new box is actually going to work. So we're going to yeah. give this a go. We it's may scrap the bunny. whole thing uh, and start over. But um, note here, it does say that uh, uh, we, they recommend enabling encryption in case you know, later, so when we set up the compliance policy, you or might require encryption on your Ubuntu box. So whatever that, uh, whatever your process is for setting up encryption may be a thing that we set up in our compliance policy. So you would target that. Um, so then in the enroll device section, it says, go install the Microsoft Intune app. Well, we need to do that. So that's the main thing that, that uh, Ben's going to do um, in the next, and that's over in this next link here. But um, make a note, we, because, Ben was really excited about this, trying this on WSL2, but nope, sorry, not supported for this scenario. But like we said- And that is, yeah. I mean, this is a while, so a while ago when we were talking about, um, okay, well, Microsoft are now saying that you can manage Linux environments. Why is that? And one of the conversations that we, uh, we had uh, internally was, well, maybe this is so that uh, all of those WSL2 environments that everyone's been playing with uh, that sort of allow you to bypass and subvert some of your corporate policies uh, can be uh, reined in a little bit, but it does not seem that that is the uh, the expectation here. So um, I don't. I'm I'm very curious to see uh, sort of what the what the actual end state is, and I think one of those uh, scenarios will absolutely be um, uh, control of access to your corporate data in those virtualized Linux environments that we all play around with. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and so. Hopefully we see more of this. And so if you want to see more of this, I would highly recommend go and use this. <laughs> show people that, you know, show Microsoft that, hey, people are adopting this. Uh, give it a go. Start using it. Um, send them a smiley or a frown in the console. Let them know this is good or send them some feedback. Let them know how they can fix it. Um, but this is, you know, good stuff to do. So these are the commands that we're about to run through. So um, for, for ease of... Uh, kind of not toggling back and forth uh, with the virtual environment and not being able to really copy and paste easily within um, his VM. We're just going to, he's going to have this on his other screen and and we're going to just, uh, he's going to talk us through what he's doing as he goes. And we're going to uh, cross our fingers and hope this works. The end state, uh, just going to tease this one out, is here in the Intune console. We are going to, uh, under devices, oh, by the way, hey, look at this. It says Microsoft Intune Admin Center. Woo! finally um, oh i haven't seen this <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah um, wow. so down here under platform linux this is what we're going to be working on so um so we'll get back to this in a minute and let me see if i can find the screen here for ben so uh we are here you go ben we are ready to go sir <laughs> Here we are. Okay, uh, so uh, we were following along on the uh, the Microsoft Learn uh, doc uh, that explains how to sort of do this. There's a couple of prereqs that we needed. Um, as we said earlier, um, this only works in uh, Ubuntu uh, for now. It's kind of annoying. Debian's my favorite thing. Uh, and uh, because uh, it's a Microsoft thing, there's lots of uh, GUI clicking that we need to do, which is fun. Uh, so one of the prereqs was I needed to install Edge, which is funny. Um, and then I guess we need to install the Intune app as well, um, which I haven't done. Uh, but we're on my uh, Ubuntu machine uh, that is not very stable. <laughs> uh, we've got the uh, we've got the dock here. Um, so I guess we can go through and we can install the Intune app. Uh, Again, we've not yep. done any testing on this at all, so who knows what's going to happen. Um, and I'll just also like to point out, I'm going to pick up fun things about Ubuntu. Is it Ubuntu or Ubuntu? It's Ubuntu. Ubuntu. It's Ubuntu. I really yeah. apologize for, I should have, Ubuntu. Oh, it really weird. wants me to install curl and GPG. Okay, well, okay. I'm going to do that. Uh, let's give this a go. Uh, I noticed when you moused over your recycle bin over there, uh, it was called the rubbish. <laughs> And, but if I mouse over mine, mine is called trash. It's <laughs> like, that is a, a careful attention to detail on the language that you got. Exactly. You know what that is? I went through the Ubi on the machine and I specifically chose uh, English Australian. Um, I'd be curious to know whether uh, if you did like uh, UK British, it called it a bin. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, uh, uh, move over because cool. I think it's called rubbish rubbish bin. Is it really rubbish yeah. bin? Okay, yeah, yeah. nice. So mine's just is yours trash. called trash can? No, no, just trash, <laughs> just trash. Okay, okay, all right, I like it. Uh, twenty oh four. I think I'm on twenty oh four. I'm probably on twenty two. Let's do this one. Yeah, you should be twenty two oh four. Yeah, I think I'm actually twenty two ten, but it'll be it'll be or fine. At least, yeah, because the other one is the LTSC one or something. Paste. Um, so for anyone that is curious about what we're actually doing here is we're uh, getting kind of certificate keys um, and adding um, this location. Uh, so uh, packages.microsoft.com Ubuntu prod uh, into our package uh, service so that we can actually download the files from it. Um, there are significantly better ways to do this, but we're going to follow the guide uh, because I've never done this before. And who knows whether it's going to work or not. Um, there's got to be a joke in here about us just uh, putting music on in the background and looking at a learn document, right? Um, all right. Yeah. Uh, is missing some stuff. I need this whole list. Do, do, do. Wow, this is uh, responsive. Yeah, I'm having the same, same experience. So I'm oh, following Lord. along. Uh, as you go, I'm doing this on my machine just in case yours doesn't make it. So Sure. I appreciate the trust and belief that this will work. But really, hopefully at the end, we end up with two devices that we've successfully enrolled into uh, into Intune. Mm -hmm. Oh, and to be clear, right. we're not enrolling them into Intune. Sorry, that was not the right words. We, we have registered them for compliance. Gonna, exactly, exactly. All right, so I've just uh, set up the environment. So I should just be able to go sudo apt update, which uh, updates my um, package management platform. And now I should be able to say sudo apt install Intune portal. And if we do the secret on, which is dash Y, which just auto accepts it, it's going to download the media. It's going to install it on my machine. And welcome to the future of Winget uh, in our Windows environments. It's going to look very similar to this once we all start using it. Uh, and then it wants me to reboot. Just typing stuff. There you go. Exactly. It's the only way you can automate things is by typing. Um, oh, there's dark mode. Cool. Okay. All right. Uh, I'm going to restart. So for those of you who are still watching, uh, you're watching a grown adult uh, restart a computer. And this is what you're doing to uh, spend your evenings. Yes. And we're doing this on our, on our weekend. Uh -huh. This Friday night, Saturday. Ben's having a beer as we're doing this, you know, like, or a pseudo beer. A pseudo, yeah. Well, no, don't say pseudo beer because pseudo beer would be uh, a beer immediately without question. This is a S, uh, pseudo spelt slightly differently. Um, yes. Okay. All right. I'm going to uh, open up those things that have now disappeared. Uh, wow. I've got a lot of browsers on my computer. All right. Uh, I'm going to open up Edge again. Let's see if it's smart enough to remember. Oh, restore. Thank you. All right. Very good. And I'm going to open my terminal. Mine almost worked. Yours almost worked? Yeah, I must have missed the step. Oh, it's the, I missed, I missed Did it the install? After update. Well, it's telling me that the repository is not signed. Uh, yeah, you didn't add the uh, the keys properly. I did something. Didn't work. I'm just wondering whether I should be able to see it in the as an application that just installed. Or wait, do I need to install? Let's have a look. Let's not make any assumptions. Okay, oh, I installed Intune Portal. Hasn't it been intuitive up to this point? Oh, so intuitive. Well, look at that. I have an app on my computer. All right. Intune agent, get access to work or school resources. So, okay, let's pop over to... Um, I love Ooh. that this is a graphical uh, way to enroll a device. This is really well thought out. Okay, uh, we're going to enroll a device in Intune. So we've got the prereqs. We've got Edge, which we could probably do this with Chrome. Uh, and uh, we've got uh, the Microsoft Intune app. So now we're going to go through and we're going to enroll the device. Um, Just, it's This is literally basically like putting company portal on this box. Or like, on your, uh, like on your Android on your phone, phone or, or whatever. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. It's the same deal. Um, so, all right, let's do this. Open the Microsoft Intune app. Sign in with your work or school account. Oh, I password? suppose the important th yeah, the important thing is, do I remember the password? Um, 
uh, where do I work? Intune.training. Huh. I can't get my repository to be trusted. Ah, uh, that's funny. Couldn't be verified. The public key is not available. I don't understand what I've done wrong. Uh, we can we can look at that later. Um, Makes me sad. I'm just hoping to follow along. You can you can try it. Just uh, there there was one line in the uh, the install there that was like multi line, and I, that that caught me. So maybe that's what it is. Oh, I don't know. We'll see. Oh wow, man. Um, okay, let's see if this works. I need to type my password correctly. Do you want to give you a temporary access pass or something? <laughs> no, it's fine. It's fine. Uh, let's just do this. Okay. Surely it's stored securely in your key vault somewhere. It is. So there we go. And now what we are doing, ladies and gentlemen, is watching a grown man. Oh, I can't remember. Okay. Password. Yep, yep, yep. This is this is terrible. All right, hang on. We're gonna pause. All right, hang on. I'm gonna get this. this is, you know what the problem is? It's my keyboard. <laughs> 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 I've got a whole bunch of uh, stupid symbols. Of course. Uh, so I got J hash. So good. It's not that good. Okay, I got it. Register. Okay, uh, unpause. <laughs> I'm, I, I will likely forget to cut this part out. So Ben, if this made it nice. in, I'm sorry. All right, all right, fine, whatever. Everyone yeah. knows my password now. Hack me, see if I care. Uh, okay, so whatever, I've put in my password. Uh, we're saying, help us keep your device secure. Register your device to continue. I guess we're gonna register. Let's see what happens. Is it gonna make me do MFA dance? It is. So many spinning circles. Okay, let's have a look here. Okay, so I've authenticated, set up access. All right, um, so. Okay, stand by before you continue. Yes. Uh, I'm looking on our tenant and I'm gonna check and see if we see this device show up. Oh, sure. I should probably also like Okay, so I've switched over and yours is called something bins. Don't ask what me is... to type my password in again. No, no, no. Um, what is, uh, what was your machine? Uh, that's a good question. I'm not seeing it. Oh, wait, 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 hey, there my... it is. Look, wait, there's a, look at that. OS, Linux, Ubuntu. Registered by Ben. Oh, amazing. Look at the machine name. <laughs> oh yeah, that's good. Microsoft Corporation Virtual Machine version Hyper V. This is a, this is a solid name. You would have thought that maybe it would have got the host name from the device. I feel like this is going to be a unique name across the tenant as people continue to register their Linux devices. <laughs> uh, yeah, I suppose so. Well, right. let's continue and see what happens. Okay, cool. Uh, all right. Cool. Uh, so what are all we right. doing? So back I've, to I've your screen. back to my screen. All right. So I've got this here. Um, we've authenticated. That was the most fun part. Uh, we're going to begin. So what oh, can yeah. I organize? Oh, uh, sorry. I looked yeah. at, that was looking in Azure AD, but I'm now looking. Okay. You are in not in Intune. Portal? You're not in Intune yet. Just for reference. So you're I'm in, listening. I'm in Intune here. Um, so we can, we can check this on my machine as well. Cause uh, it turns out once you type your password in right once, you know what you're doing. Is there really only Go. one device? No, Why no you're in the wrong section. I'm That's in the wrong section? Patch. That's auto patch. Oh my God. Okay. Go. Devices, the top node. No, no, stop. Oh, I All see. All devices. Scroll All up. All devices. 
<laughs> When's the last time you came in here, Ben? You know what? It's been <laughs> a really been... long time. The intern, uh, the intern doesn't touch Inchin very much, so this is interesting. Okay, cool. So there's nothing there. Um, so let's let's continue on. All right. So uh, you you're getting the basic warning. So for anyone that's enrolled uh, a personal or an Android device or even an iPhone device, most of this is going to be very similar. It's just saying uh, these are the permissions and the roles that are. Uh, you know, we're going to have access to your device. So we're going to be able to view the model, serial number, and operating system. Note, not the name, which is why we got that ridiculous name of the device. Uh, we got the names of the apps we've got installed. Uh, apparently identify your device by name. That's interesting. Uh, and then view information collected. Actually, I just want to do something. Echo host name. I think that's probably wrong. Ben, yeah, it should, the, the name is Ben's Linux box, but anyway, whatever. Uh, and then we're going to view information collected by work apps and networks. Um, I don't have any work apps on my machine, um, but I guess we could probably install things like uh, Office if that is uh, cross-platform supported. Um, but we're going to begin. It's going to register the device. Let me bring up the browser and I'll just do this as well. Okay, it's checking the status now. So... I'm assuming this is the same uh, because, you know, compliance policies like this work the same for anything uh, that I should have had a, like a 24 hour limit to not be compliant. Um, well, but we also haven't even set up. A we haven't even policy. configured one. Okay. Um, do you want to, yep. do you want to, well, actually let me refresh this and see if my device is in here now. I don't think it will be. Yeah, I mean that really is the question: is will it show up? Because we don't know. If, we don't know if that's yeah. If that's curious. Being in tune, you would hope it would. Yeah, it, I mean it definitely definitely should. Uh, let's go into by platform. So oh, you know what? It. There's devices. Let me, okay, yeah, you just went the same place. Yeah, so it's yeah. not here yet. Um, interesting. It is. Well, perhaps there is something that will tell us that, or perhaps it has to meet compliance before it'll show up. But that seems odd. It does. Hit, hit view um, issues and see what that says. Right. So this is interesting because normally, in, you know, in the in the Windows world, when you enroll a device, you get a uh, threshold or like a twenty four hour, um, uh, a, you know, uh, allowance to do things before that compliance policy is enforced. This is just saying you don't have access by default, which is probably the right way to do things. Um, but obviously, uh, that wouldn't fly in most corporate places. Um, but it's still saying that we're checking to see if you can access the company resource. And now we don't have a compliance policy configured, so it's probably never going to work. Um, so, uh, Adam, did you want to share your screen and we'll, uh, we'll build a compliance policy and see if this just magically works? Uh, yeah, we're going to give it a shot. All right. Let me, yeah, you got that. All right. So if we're checking here, basically we finished these steps, re rebooted. Uh, if you needed to update, we don't need to do that right now. But then the next thing is to go, or, or actually, let's go back here. Ooh, so ha, go, go, go to right. the portal. It's, it's popped up in the thing. This is so exciting seeing text on the screen. Um, refresh that. Hey, look, at, look that. at that. We did it. So the important thing to point out here is the compliance is still not evaluated, which is why it's saying that I'm not compliant. Um, as we were saying, uh, but we don't have a compliance policy, so let's build one now and see. But and it see even got go. the right name now. Yeah, no, it's good. It so actually works. So it looks like it just took a little bit of. Time oh, to you get know there. why? Because the AAD device, which that'd be like the serial number of the machine, and because it's a Hyper V machine, it's all weird. No, I think we just caught it too soon. I think. It's oh, you reckon? Be, yeah, I think it's going to be corrected here. There it is. Yep. Oh, we just okay. we it just, just caught it while. early. Well, that's okay, but this is this is it no, but helping us that's... out and caching the data. I'm sure. Potentially. Because it showed it correct. There it is. Yeah. So oh, just wow. timing. Okay. All right. Awesome. Cool. Moving along. Great. Good. All right. Let's, build uh, so compliance let's go policy. back here and go make a compliance policy. So Steve and I did a compliance policy uh, in a video recently. Sorry, I'm moving, switching screens around. Um, so, wow, we can't change anything. Perfect. Good. No, no choices to make there. And this is a uh... uh, please put an emoji in there. We need to follow correct uh, naming protocol. Thank you. How's the intern enforcing naming uh, policies? Good job. Thank you. 
I'm okay, not so. paid. <laughs> <laughs> we need to demonstrate competence, I think. Oh, okay, okay cool. So we're going to just add, I'm going to, for sake of getting them all on the screen here, we'll just add all the categories yeah. here. Um, Password policy, like, don't do that. <laughs> well, we're going to show it. We, this is just to discuss them. We don't have to actually sure, create okay. them. But so, right. okay, so really, this is neat. So this is a settings catalog based compliance policy, which is not how all of our other compliance policies are. No, because they've been based on uh, like just the, uh, the, like the, the configuration device policies. Well, they, of. well, what, what I mean is that they've got the other, or they're, they're all the single pane, the older style yeah. thing. And so now we can add or remove individual items from the policy instead of them That's all really being neat. there set as configured, not configured. Um, okay. So, we can set the maximum OS version. Obviously, it has to be Ubuntu. So make the uh, make the uh, max and min the uh, do uh, max is um, 22.10, 22.10, and then do the minimum is uh, 22.04. So we're being very gracious and saying you can have two uh, two types of uh, Ubuntu. Now we just demoed this in our last video, um, so check that one out if you want to know how to make a custom compliance. Policy is essentially a discovery script, which I believe in this case would be a PowerShell script still. Um, and then you have a JSON thing, and we're not going to get into that on this one. Um, so then you can check and see if we've got an encryption. You're not going to be encrypted on yours, so let's not do yeah, that. Probably not. Um, now, here's an interesting one that we haven't talked through on compliance stuff, but um, while we're here, Recently discovered that if you set a password compliance policy, you are effectively setting a password policy on the device because there's no way for Microsoft to to check the length of your password. As an example, there's no way for them to check the things about your password to meet the compliance policy, the complexity without actually just enforcing the creating a policy and enforcing it. Right. Uh, so. Be careful if you set password policies. I don't know how it works on Linux, but definitely within Windows, if you set a password policy, it is a password policy. <laughs> right. So just um, keep that in mind. Because this uh, can catch you, right? If you've got a password policy and a compliance policy with that, then compliance, you can... Compliance will win. Um, right. But it's weird because if, like, if let's say you have a longer complexity password policy and then you also yeah. have this set, which one, like how, how, what's your end result? So you can end up in a race condition, right? Where you're just yeah. always out of compliance. Yeah. Well, and, yeah. and not so much that, but like, uh, actually the, uh, buddy of mine is having an issue right now where he's got that situation. He's got a, po a policy set with longer password length than the compliance is set to. And the, for some reason, the devices are losing the compliance policy setting. Uh, right. And then they're reverting back and forth. And so he's got devices where the users are, every time the policy gets reapplied, it triggers a password reset. Uh, and okay. <laughs> it's not great. It's no. a bug. Something's, something's not right. But it's an interesting thing to highlight here. Like, just don't do this. This would be probably. the, yeah, this would explain why I've, I've definitely been in environments where uh, one person gets uh, compliance or uh, password policy A, and then someone else gets password policy B. Uh, because whichever one's been applied at the at that time wouldn't be enforced. I've seen it in a lot of places, and I guess that yeah. explains it. Yeah. Now, interestingly, it is in fact called out, called out in the docs that that's what happens. Right. Um, right. But it's not called out here. I've asked. Hey, can you guys add that? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Would yeah, be nice. it seems pretty important. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, let's. Uh, do Do you? I want to see this compliant, and I know my password will not meet any <laughs> compliance policies. Uh, because it's uh, you know do as we do as we say, not do as we do here. Yeah, so um, we're gonna mark, mark it non-compliant immediately, okay. and uh, then we're gonna do uh, all we can do all devices. Oh, and that's okay. So that's why I'm non-compliant because we don't have one. It's just immediately said, well, you're not compliant. But if you had one and then set a 24-hour window, you know, like most of us do, then I, it would be fine for the actually, first day. Actually, I think that Steve had. I didn't mean to do that. Um, I think Steve has one set, mm -hmm. uh, our default one for the whole deal. Oh, that may be hitting you like the default policy, maybe setting you non compliant. I, mm -hmm. I don't know where we left it, but that could be it. Okay, um, that's fine. So I was hoping that this would have filter enablement, but it doesn't. 
but damn, it, this is to target Linux devices only. So ideally, this just does that. Let's give it a yeah. shot. See, and then um, yeah, just create. Okay. Let's let's see what happens. Target it to you, and let's see if you can get compliant. So before you do that, let's just uh, jump here and I'll double check. Sure. Yeah. Uh, so that policy is applied now. So see, it does. So see, this is what I was talking about. So it's a policy type. It's a settings, settings catalog. catalog. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that, that makes it, sense. That's the new standard, right? Yeah. So, so you could have come here to start it. And, and it does a settings catalog, but if you do Windows, gotcha. it does an older school compliance policy. Interesting. Yep. All right. Uh, I'm going to, hmm, do I have a sync option? I've, the only thing I can see is refresh. I think all you have to do is just hit check again and it will pull down the new thing. Well, I don't have an option to check again. I've got refresh. Uh, it's going to yeah. check the status, but I don't know whether that will enforce. Yeah, I think it will. You reckon? It's similar to what it, what the way it worked in the um, company portal, I believe. Okay. I think. I mm. mean, so hit all right. Hit view issues, and then how do how to? Okay, we just need to check. So what's the done time on my device? Sixteen eleven. Still checking. So. Okay. I wonder if we've got the option to. Oh, it's come up. Look at that. See, there you go. All right. Anyone that's been watching this channel since day one, demos never work. We have not tested this. We have not done a thing to prep other than just catch up because I haven't spoke to Adam in it's probably been a bit. A, it's been a bit. Um, and all of a sudden it's just working. So power to, power to Linux, I guess, uh, is what I'm trying to say here. Um, well, Ben, power. I know that you're not an avid, avid watcher of the channel, but <laughs> what I have I noticed... I watch every episode, every episode. What I have noticed is that we just were amateurs when we started and we have a clue now and our <laughs> demos have actually been much more successful uh, in the past couple of years. <laughs> our success rate has, has continued to climb. Um, I think we got tired of it after the uh, Windows Hello Business debacle and we said, right, we got to get better at this. So can we try something, Adam? Can you change that compliance policy and put in a ridiculous password limit? I just want to run it, this again and see if it knocks me out of compliance. Actually, I want to see what I want to see if it if it triggers a um, a password reset. A it password can't do reset. that. It can't do that. Why not? Um, for reasons. <laughs> Let's find out. Yeah. I doubt <laughs> it's got the mechanisms in place. And I want to do it really complicated. Sure. All right, so minimum digits of. Uh, sure. Also, so it's, it's got to be minimum length of twenty. <laughs> okay, okay. Minimum lowercase uh, five <laughs> symbols. Oh, we gotta have Lord. we gotta have all symbols here. Sure, see, 12, 12 symbols. Minimum uppercase or lower <laughs> minimum uppercase. Uh, let's we'll do one. We got one uppercase. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, I got it. I got it. Uh, now, I just want to point out to everyone watching. Um, you know, one of the big things that we uh, we show here is kind of like the idea of best practice. Best practice is a lie, but this is not best practice. That password policy is not to ever be used in production. Absolutely uh, not. <laughs> this is going to break things. Okay, I'm yes. I'm very curious to see whether it can actually know uh, what my password is uh, in a Linux world. Um, okay, so let me refresh. I'm really impressed at how quick that compliance policy applied as well. Yeah. Um, I'm also very much enjoying this streaming platform that we're using now. Um, yeah. It, in case you're out there trying to come up with a, we used to use Teams because it was what we had and it was better than all the complications that Steve would always bring us. <laughs> bring <laughs> hey, us it just works straight away. Yeah. View so we're using a, a platform called StreamYard. Um, it's very affordable and it, very slick, very nice. <laughs> like it. <laughs> Every single policy uh, has failed. Them. So yeah, twelve yeah. digits, twenty-four. Uh, okay, and that's interesting because so it hasn't enforced me to change the password. But if I click through, how to? It opens Chrome, uh, and it shows me the password complexity. Yeah. And it is oh, it's okay. So it's actually telling me and there's a document here on how to change. Well, that's, that's how to change in, in, encryption, but what does it say right there? To resolve this issue, update your device password so that it meets. Okay, so right. this one is not going to actually, because there's no MDM. 
It can. Yeah, there's no way that it can enforce that. Um, yeah. There's no management platform to enforce path. Well, there probably is, but no, that's cool. Okay, sweet. So if you, you know, if you're in compliance and then you decide to change it for whatever reason, or someone gains access and changes the password, um, you saw how quickly that uh, compliance policy came down the line. I've I've never actually seen any compliance policy be this fast. Um, but you know, in the scenario that maybe someone gains access to a uh, you know a server infrastructure. Uh, changes the password so that they can get in easy and that goes out of compliance. That's a really good security mechanism to have. Um, yeah. Now, cool. we, so we should stop here, but uh, we could go the next step of setting an act, creating a conditional access policy and showing that in action. We've, we did one long ago. Um, not a ton has changed in that space. I mean, conceptually anyway. Um, it's still just as confusing as ever going in there and setting things. Um, but it would be neat to, to look at this and see, okay, now how do we leverage what we've just done in a conditional access policy? Yeah, um, we can do that. But I think we should break that into a separate video so that sure. we, it doesn't get lost. Because I think we can make that into a more holistic picture, not just embedded in the back of this Linux video that only Linux people might watch. Sure. Okay. Well, let's uh, let's wrap up then. So, okay. Basically, hopefully everyone has seen how simple that was. Um, it was only a couple of prereqs. Um, installing the uh, the Ingen portal in, in Linux was, you know, it's all documented really well, and that's only going to get better um, once, um, you know, once you don't need to put keys and stuff in your machine. But it, the compliance policy just works, and it's, and it's enforced really quickly. Um, so that's going to allow you to leverage a lot of control there. So um, hopefully you gain some uh, knowledge here. Um, and hopefully we didn't butcher it too much. Um, Linux is my uh, is my baby, um, but more <laughs> more using uh, command line stuff. So this is uh, this was fun for me as well. Um, Adam, anything to say? Uh, I'm I'm impressed. I think this went well. I'm glad we waited because um, me and Steve would have destroyed this and it would have been <laughs> amazing. He would awesome. have acted like he knew what he was doing, and then it would have failed. Yeah, well, go um, with and he won't watch this video, so he won't know we've said all these things about him. So don't tell anybody. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Well, thanks All for right. watching, everyone. Uh, we'll see you on the next one. See you later.